I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Andrea Bowman. You know, Andrea, emancipation, it tells an essential story um, about the experience of Black men and women in this very dark time and place. Um, what factors must the artists uh, in your department and in your colleague, Ken Diaz's department, have to take into account to ensure that the look of each character is not only befitting the period, but of course, because of the primarily Black cast? Um, for me, it was the research and making sure that it was authentic. It's very vital that even though this is a story that you know has a dark undertone to it, that when you see these characters, you can make sure that they look as realistic as possible. For my team, I made sure I had a team of four and we made sure that in our research, we made sure that once we found out who the actors were, that each actor and each character would have its look. So when you're watching the film, you can see that person's individual struggle and journey and the different things that they had to go through through the film. Yeah, um, you know, for the lay person, we, and of course, because we are in this immersed in the emotional impact of what the film is telling us, we probably miss some of the details. So I'd love for you to talk me through um, a couple of examples, perhaps maybe with um, Dodien or Peter or anyone that you think where the hair really, you really had to go to some great lengths to make sure, and no pun intended, to make sure that the hair is just completely spot on. Well, yes, I, I can since you brought up Dodian, I would go to her. Like for her look, she had three major looks um, because she had, well, four. In her everyday look, when you actually first start the film, we wanted to express and show her natural hair in its own natural state. Even though a lot of times people think there's no real, you know, no work towards making natural hair look a certain way. But for her, especially to keep up with continuity, because, you know, we don't shoot in order and then we have to go back to things that I made sure that each process, I always build a base and make sure like with her, I use a technique called two strand twist. I took each section and twisted it down so the curl pattern can get a certain pattern, because even in Louisiana, where we filmed that yeah. humidity has a factor on hair as well and then the sweat, then the dirt, and all the other stuff that we was gonna have to add and implement it to doing the hair as well. I had to make sure that I have a structure. So I always started her each morning with just a two strand twist, allowing her hair to be, first of all, nurtured and taken care of, making sure the different products was taken because a lot of times people don't understand as well. There are people outside of the film. So we, have right. sure, <laughs> so we have to make sure that the hair is in the best, uh, you know, best condition, have the best products that fit that particular texture of hair. Because for her, she's like right between a 4B and a 4C. Like she have two different textures in her hair. So when I get the, the actors there, I always examine their hair, see what type of products that I need to use. Then I go through a format of how I'm going to structure. I do so many twists on this section, this one. So for continuity later, I can be able to recreate this over and over and over. So when you're watching the film, it looks seamless. Yeah. And then like for the children mm -hmm. that I did, one of the little young ladies that played the younger daughter, um, we made sure that she had the plaits. And with her texture, she's like a 2B, a 2C. So for us, we had to make sure that she used another type of product that actually would give a look that gives a natural progression. So I always build it up and then I take it down. So wow. every day she looks so beautiful and all perfect. But before we head to set, we always have to dishevel it and make sure that we use the same technique, which was a sponge technique on the edges and in the back to give that that ruffling as yes. if she was sleeping on the floor or if she had, you know, she didn't really have product because, you know, we're still making a movie, but we have to make sure that it reads once you see it, you know, you guys see it, that it looked spot on. Yeah, so you're not just plonking a couple of wigs on different um, actors and just, mm. there you go. Like, it's not <laughs> that simple. No, even, yeah, even with the wigs, the wigs has a process as well. Um, because like, um, for Ronnie uh, Blivens, he was one of the, the catchers. We actually yeah. used hair extensions and then we had to, you know, double him with his stunt guy that when you see both of them, you thinking it's the same person, but a lot of times 
that wasn't even him. And I use extensions on him. And we had to make sure that each extension was placed in daily and cut it to the perfect texture. But his double had a wig that I had to take and actually add texture because his hair was this long and that we had to take and put the same amount of texture, the same amount of length to the hair to be able to match. So when you're watching it, you can't tell the difference. No, I mean, I wonder, I, I've asked this a few times with people in your profession, do you want audiences to not notice your blood, sweat and tears and just think that there's just nothing? Or do you want them to see the incredible work that has gone into the process of making them look so authentic? Authentic, Because it's like a two-edged sword, isn't it? Well, for me, I when watching the film, I want them to not see hair at all. I yeah. want them to see that character. I don't, I, I want it to be so seamless to where you're watching it and all you see it's this man running, you know? Yeah. That's how I project it. Because if you notice, oh, that's a wig. Oh, she's glammed <laughs> up. Oh, she's this. Then I don't think I've done my job correctly because they're not themselves anymore they're a character now so all i wanted you to see is dodian all i want you to see is um uh peter and these different people that's our goal especially on this one because the story is so intent to where we didn't want anything to come to be a distraction or something that could be taken away away from the story uh, absolutely it is so immersive um and often confronting and you know, honestly, I didn't know a lot about this this photograph. I, I, di I didn't know that this photograph of um, this enslaved man was the rallying cry worldwide to, to open people's eyes to what was going on in America. And I'm just wondering, I've asked this for a few people that have worked on the film, how aware of that particular angle were you? Because we've seen movies about enslaved people before. This mm -hmm. one, Act One, has gone in a different direction, given us a new angle and you spin on the story. What did you think of that? Well, for me, I was very aware because I'm from Louisiana. Right. But I it, I do a lot of period films, especially for African-American films. Yeah. So my first was probably in 2000, I'll say 12, 10 or 12, something in that area because I had got hired for another uh, enslaved show, which was underground on WGN. Yeah. And when it popped up, I kept noticing, I'm not noticing. And I was like, I wonder if this guy have a story. And that's me being the researcher that I am for anything that I do. And I dove in. And then when I found out he was from Louisiana, it clicked with me because now I'm saying to myself, I've never heard of this man's story, but he's like, right, my granddaughter lives in Baton Rouge and he ran to Baton Rouge. And when I read that, it just, it just took me in and just to be able to know his story that depth. And when I found out that Antoine and that Will was doing it a year, even before I even got called to do it, I was so excited because that his Peter story was so personal to me. And like when I asked my grandmother about it or asked somebody else that I knew that was from Louisiana, they was like, oh yeah, we knew about the picture. And I was like, but nobody ever told me like, y'all, y'all need to share the wealth because yeah. <laughs> his story is like one of the most unique stories ever. And it was so important once I got the call to be able to see this man's story to be told, I was all, I was so I was so involved already in and it comes that picture comes up so much even like with George Floyd it started popping back up again because of the significance because a lot of people know but a lot of people don't know and that's why I was happy and very elated that Apple and everybody took their time and invested into making Peter's you know story become to life because it's a very unique of many I'm quite sure but one that was actually documented and actually, you know, took serious. And I'm I'm very glad to be a part of it. Absolutely. And I'm really glad that I was able to see it and understand it. And now I think many people will, I mean, his legacy will now live on in a different way. Um, what a lot of people <clears throat> don't quite understand about the makeup and hair departments and how they work together, but also the challenges they have daily. You have to design, you have to research, you've got to get, you've got to be prepared. And then every day, I assume you or your team are on set before anybody else. And you're making sure that the hair looks appropriate for the scene. It could be disheveled, it could be dirty, it could be whatever. 
Um, how difficult is it to be a, to be in your profession, not only pre-production but during production? I would say I wouldn't necessarily say difficult. Sometimes we run into challenges because when you're a department head, and if you have experience already, or even a key, because key and department head runs neck and neck. But in designing, that's what I'm so grateful about when productions give you enough time to prep and to really be able to research and dig into these, these different looks and to, you know, to collaborate with the director and the showrunner or the different producers to give you that time to be able to marinate. And so once the actors come in and get involved, then you see what texture hair they have or the length of hair, the color, because even for me, color even matter because that's what we did with Ben Foster when we didn't change his natural color because even that plays a thing with me, the length, the color, the texture. Um, I would say sometimes you run into challenges because it's a lot, but once for me, I can only speak for, I always have, I have a system. And once I understand, I lay out each actual character, each actual character, I go and I get three examples. Then I take those three examples to the director or the showrunner on this one, it was Antoine, it was the director. So we all walk through, even with makeup as well was there. And we walk through and hear what he wants to see, hear what the showrunners wanted to see. And then we collaborate with the actors and see what we can actually create from that. So every day I took 150% Everybody that came from the background all the way up to, because um, I wasn't responsible for Peter. Um, Will has his own team, which is Pierce Austin, but yeah. me and Pierce collab because I was responsible for Will's double. So much as you see that running, sometimes that's his double as well. Yeah. And like I said, that seamless transition. So we both have to be on, on the same page. Good thing that me and him had already had a work relationship before we worked together before. So it was even more so how we merged together and be able to make sure that Will's wig matched um, his doubles wig. But all those, you can see them in my trailer. I even have a book, what I call my Bible. And then I have every name listed, what clipper that I use because people had grow over that period of, of time because we <laughs> shot that film only four months and it actually went to seven seven and a half months due to the hurricanes and the different weather stuff so for me i've taught myself i have a system that i've been using i'll say within the last seven or eight years and i have my bible and i know we use the number three on the sides we took a one in the top for such and such and such then next one oh we didn't use that we just used the sponge techniques we did shears we did scissor over comb even every a soldier, every soldier had an assignment. Even the background had an assignment. I even taught my team a technique of pinning because now, you know, most of those kids that we use for extras, they didn't want to cut their hair because, no. you know, most of them are growing their hair out. So I'm like, okay, God, how am I going to be able, because we want these, want them to be involved, but here we go with all this textured hair. So I taught them a technique as well of the bobby pin and hairpin method where you can take hair that's actually this long and you can shrink it to this long. And I taught that to them based on me with trial and error over the years that I had to use on other shows and yeah. it worked perfectly. So those that had the nice hairlines that came in, didn't have enough time to grow their hair out. How are you gonna cover that? You take that same technique, but you take the ends of the hair and you use it and you put a little glue on the side and you glue the hair on top of it look seamless and you would never know. But these are techniques that, you know, that I was already equipped because when I'm not working on a film, I'm always training, I'm always trying things. So when different situations come up, I'm already prepared. So yeah. being a department head, you have to go in with like a structured agenda because if you don't, because of the different challenges that can come from the weather, that can come from different situations, which we faced because we was in the swamps, we was in rain. Some days we had rain to hit us. So that technique I was just telling you about, about the two bobby pins crossing hairpins, yeah. it saved the day because wet hair stretches. So if it wasn't pinned and properly put placed in, that hair, you would have seen this shot and then all is long hair. Oh, no. And it wouldn't have fit the picture. So yes, yeah, so it's it's I would say some challenges, but for me it's 
I, I love a good challenge, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. But to, to get those reference photos, and that's what's the blessed part for this one. We had so, because you know, that's when the camera first, that's how Peter Pitcher even came to pass, because that's when the photograph uh, for <laughs> photographers are going around taking pictures of the actual, um, of the different parts of the war made it so good. So when I went back and Google, I had so many great reference photos. And when I tell you, I strategically made sure that every person had that look that fit either with their own texture of hair or with a wig or something, but everybody was thought out and processed. I was at every fitting. I was a part of every, when I say everything, cause I wanted everything to make sure that it, nothing slipped through the cracks and everybody had their assigned hairstyle. And they appreciated one young man the other day, he posted a picture of his hand full of bobby pins. That he, had. he was like, I could not tell y'all how many days that I went through this process, but it was well worth it to be yeah. able to tell Peter's story. So I just feel like much as a department head can really prepare and plan, it makes it, I would say a, a, a better process because you know, life happens, but it makes it, a steady transition throughout the film yeah. so that's my take on it oh yeah it sounds like you had to be super agile and it brings me to this I think you've touched on it already but you won you got an Emmy nomination in 2019 for True Detective and you've worked on some huge projects like Watchmen and Women of the Movement and Respect and Lovecraft Country um so you turn to Emancipation you work for quite a few months in the swamps in the humidity such a huge cast i can't imagine how exhausting that was but then you have that experience and moving forward what what will you take with you what did you most learn about yourself as an artist and as a person working with antoine fuqua to move forward in your career i what i took from it is that that i'm strong i'm strong because the weight of that show um it was a lot just from the content in itself yeah. the different dialogue that had to come, you know, come out. Cause it's my, I take it as my responsibility, especially for the actors that are coming in and, you know, having the African-American actors and the um, Caucasian actors and different, different cultures. Cause actually we had different cultures actually on there. Cause some of the um, soldiers were different descent as well, but to make sure that they felt comfortable and in a at a place of peace where they can express themselves and al be allowed to be able to come and embark this particular character. So for me, it's the strength. I, I developed more of that because I was that cheerleader in the trailer to get them motivated. Cause you know, we start the day, we start the day with That's the right. actors and we're the, what I call the heartbeat, you know, of the show. Cause if they come in here and makeup and it's some issues at the gate, the rest of the day is going to be some issues. I it's promise great. I've seen it too many times. So for me, mm -hmm. it's the strength that I gained from that show. Because now I feel like I can run any department on earth after enduring the weather, enduring the load of the cast and the content, being able to be that support system. Um, when I went to the premiere, that's when I seen all that. I hadn't seen any of them since we wrapped. And that's the first thing they were saying to me. It was like, Mona, thank you for just being that support system for us to be able to embark these characters and make us feel like we were special when we left and we were able to get that stuff off of us to be able to come back the next day and be able to do it all over again. Wow. Well, I want to congratulate you on some stunning work. Thank you for your time oh, thank today. Thank you. Good luck for your future projects. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.